comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Do you know that witchcraft spirit can attack the families of believers? Do you know that they attack marriages of pastors? I see pastor will preach on the pulpit, but go home and be quarreling with his wife. The wife will come and smile to sisters in the church and go home and be frowning her face to the husband. What is operating in that house? Which craft spirit have overtaken their marriage? And can I tell you this now? Once it is in that family, there is no way that pastor can succeed. He must deal with the oppression of witchcraft in his marriage first. The same thing with anybody that is a child of God. And that's why we are here this morning. Today is the day of the final battle. Witchcraft spirit shall be terminated today. You will not see them anymore in your life from this morning. You will not see them anymore in your body from this morning. You will not see them anymore in your marriage from this morning. Before I go to the light, I have something I want to show you. When somebody is under the attack of witchcraft, what are the things that will be happening to the person. And I want you to be serious and check your own life. So that if any of these things is happening in your life, you will know how to pray this morning. When somebody is under the attack of witchcraft, you know, what are the things that will be happening to the person? Brothers and sisters, there are people that will say, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Nothing is happening to me. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. But you still need to deal with the witchcraft oppression against your life. When the person is under the attack of witchcraft, you can see that that person is bewitched. That the witches and wizards are oppressing the person. They are sitting on that person. The person is bewitched. He needs deliverance. He needs help. And if you are here this morning and you are under the attack of witchcraft, you will be delivered this morning. I say you will be delivered this morning. Number one, you will be seeing good things in the dream. You will be seeing them in vision. But there will be no physical manifestation. You see good things in the dream. Good things in vision. All the time. When you pray. When you sleep. But there will be no physical manifestation. That is an evidence that you are under the attack of witchcraft. Because as it is in the spirit, so it has to be in the physical. So if there are good things you are seeing in the dream and they are not manifesting in the physical, something is holding you. Something is standing against you. Witchcraft forces are fighting against your life. But this morning, this morning, before you go, the power of witchcraft that is operating against you shall be terminated this morning.
You don't need to put many things together and say everything the pastor said is about me. That is like putting yourself into confusion. Just pick the major ones. Just take about one, two or three of them and deal with them seriously this morning and get out of the bondage of witchcraft operating against your life. Let everything you see in the spirit that is good will manifest like that in the physical. Can I have a loud amen here? That is not loud enough. A loud amen here. I'm looking for amen to Jesus in every loud amen here. You are seeing good things in the dream and in the vision, but it's not manifesting the physical. And when you go to, to, to ask questions, the person you ask may tell you and say, well, maybe God is delaying it. That is not God Almighty. That's not God Almighty. He reveals his purposes and he brings them to pass. And whatever that is revealed in the spirit is already given to you. I want you to listen to me now. I told you I'm not preaching this. If I'm preaching, this is not my tone. When I'm preaching, I know the tone I use. I'm actually sharing with you from my experience as a pastor by the grace of God and the counseling program ministration to people and my observations. Whatever good thing that the Lord revealed to you in the spirit he show you your baby in the dream. You have been praying for child. You are looking for child and he show you the baby in the spirit. You carry the baby in your hand. That baby is already given to you. If it does not manifest, there is something standing against you. That is where the work of witchcraft comes in. It showed you progress in the dream. It is what he has given that he is showing you. It is already in your hand. It is already in your portion. It is your blessing. If it doesn't manifest, something is standing against your life. And that's what you have to deal with this morning. You must deal with it this morning. And as you deal with it this morning, you are going to have the victory. You will have the deliverance. I say you will have the deliverance. I say you will have the deliverance. You see good things in the dream, but it doesn't manifest in the physical. Success in your academy. Promotion in your job. Upliftment in your offices. Breakthrough in your business. Ah, uh, testimonies in your marriage. Fruitfulness to you as a woman looking for children. But they are not manifesting in the physical. That is an evidence that something is standing against you. You need to take it this morning. Don't take everything. Just take few. Maybe one, two, three. Deal with it. Get your friends. Freedom, go home with mighty testimonies. Number two. When a person is under oppression, but he doesn't see any reason why he should go for deliverance. The wife is telling him, Go for deliverance. He said, No, I'm born again. Why should I go for deliverance? 
And the wife said, I know. But look at the problem we're having. Let's go for deliverance. He said, no. I don't want to go for deliverance. I don't even believe in deliverance. That man is bewitched. He's under the influence and bondage of witchcraft. If you are here this Money. and you have been running away from deliverance I want you to get ready because today is the day of your deliverance the Holy Ghost has brought you when you do not expect you have run away from him for a long time and he has brought you here before you leave here this morning power that past power will enter your body Every work of Satan will be terminated from your life. There was a particular young woman. I told her some years ago to go for deliverance. But she didn't want to go. Marine spirit were disturbing her. They were disturbing her seriously. And you know. They were doing all sorts of evil with her in the spirit. Her body was overtaken by marine spirit. Deposits of marine were all over her. She was married to a prince in the river. And she had children in the spirit realm. And was also married in the physical to her husband. And that, those spirits were disturbing her seriously. And I said, Go for deliverance. She was running away. She didn't go for deliverance. And then, when the devil discovered, that he has succeeded in making her not to go for deliverance. The devil came one day and said, You know what? I'm going to use you. I will make you a prophetess. A powerful prophetess. You'll be seeing revelation. You'll be giving prophecy. And so she now concluded that those marine spirits that were disturbing her, they were actually only spirit combined. No, that all of them who are only spirit together. That they were only trying to use her, but she did not surrender. And she started prophesying. She started seeing vision. And people were going to her. You know that when a bewitched woman is sitting in a place, and many people are also bewitched, they go because they are covered in darkness, they go to those places where the, the secret of their oppression of Satan will not be exposed. A lot of them were going to her until one day. When the devil finished with her, he turned her mad. That spirit started troubling her. She will go to the junction and be prophesying to nobody. 
She will go to the market and be prophesying to everybody until she became fully mad. If you are here this morning and you have been running away from deliverance, the Lord has already brought you and that problem will not escape the fire of the Holy Spirit. Fire will consume the problem before you go. Fire will consume the problem before you go. When a person is praising the man that wants to kill you, the person that wants to kill you, you are praising him and calling him a good man. Because they are blindfolded you and you are ignorant. You are placing, placing the man that wants to kill you. That is an evidence that you are under the influence of witchcraft. That's why you need to pray fervently and say, Father, open my eyes to see where my problem is coming from. Let me give you this testimony. And this morning you will have your victory. I say you will have your victory. When this miracle happened, it happened many years ago, and it happened. Many believers were revived because of the testimony of this woman. She was not born again. She was looking for children. And she was praying just as an unbeliever. When a person is not born again and is looking for miracles, he will depend on prayer materials. He will be looking for holy water. He will be looking for holy oil. He will be looking for holy paper, holy handkerchief, holy bed, holy everything. Because it's not born again. But when you are born again, Jesus begins to live inside you. You will not find those things useful anymore. Because by the power of sonship, you have your victory. Every six months, this woman, we had a dream and a cow will come with fury and attack her and she will lose the pregnancy. Six month pregnancy. It happened many, many times. Where they used to go for service and church and prayers. It was one of these apostle churches. They say we are going to apostle. You can finish it by yourself. I don't know it. I don't know the one that is the apostle. Uh, maybe I don't know which of them, but they say it's apostle church. That, that is where they were going. The mother-in-law was there, the husband, everybody, they were all going to that church, and the man of God, the prophet, we bless water for her and say, bath with this water. We rub this oil on your belly the baby will not no enemy no witch no demon they will be telling her this every time and once it is six months that cow will come again and we attack her and she will lose that baby the mother-in-law was always concerned the husband all the women they are troubled they will be happy they will be fasting and be praying the man, the man, the prophet, we give them fasting. Everybody will do the fasting with this woman. She was praising the people that were killing her. 
Until she gave her life to Jesus. When she gave her life to Jesus, Jesus. she started serving the Lord. Received Holy Ghost baptism. And the Lord visited her again with another child. One day, it was six months. As usual, she was in the house. And in the night, this cow started coming. It was coming with hunger. Wanting to slam the horn at the belly of this woman. As the cow got to her, wanted to raise up his head to slam it at this woman, rock appeared between the woman and the cow. And the cow slammed its head against the rock. And the head scattered to pieces. The woman's baby was saved. They were all living in that very big house. As they were there, the woman opened her eyes. The mother-in-law was shouting in the room. My head, my head, my head, my head. They rushed to the room where she was. Blood was coming out of her nose. Blood was coming out of her ears. Blood was coming out of her mouth. I want you to get ready for what God is about to do today. You have been praising those that are killing you. And you don't even know that they are the one killing you. But this morning, the God of heaven has arisen. He will fight the battle for you. The power that is attacking you shall be terminated this morning. I say that power shall be terminated this morning. That was how she had her first baby in oh, her so life. That woman died on that bed. She only confessed all the evil she had been doing, doing and then she died. When you are a spiritual giant before and now you have become a dwarf in the physical, there is an attack of witchcraft upon your life. You are a giant in the spirit. You are a firebrand Christian. But now you have become like a dwarf, a, a very smallish person in the spirit. That shows there is an attack of witchcraft against your life. When your life is moving in anti-clockwise motion, everything is moving backwards. Business moving backwards. Marriage moving backwards. Every good thing that was happening before start moving backwards. There is an attack of witchcraft against your life. But as you come here this morning, the power of Jesus is coming down. Attack of witchcraft shall be terminated in your life. I say it shall be terminated in your life. I say it shall be terminated in your life. When you know that the person you want to marry. It's under the influence of witchcraft that the person is possessed. And yet you say, it doesn't matter. Love covers everything. Lord will, the Lord will help me. I will, I will know what to do. The Lord show you in the spirit. Don't go into that marriage. That man is possessed. That woman is possessed. You say no problem. The Holy Ghost understands. The Lord will help me. I will love covers everything. Then you go ahead into the marriage. You are under the influence of witchcraft. 
That is the only thing that will make you to go into such a marriage. And so many people are held because of wrong decision they have taken. Because witchcraft spirits are operating on their lives. But this morning, as we have come to the presence of God, it will destroy the powers of Satan in your life. It will terminate the powers of Satan in your life. When you cannot understand yourself anymore, it's like something is remote controlling you. You are doing what you don't like to do and you do not do what you're supposed to do. That is a sign that you are under the attack of witchcraft. When your blessing is easily diverted, you saw it very clearly in the spirit. But that blessing is diverted to another person. Somebody has snatched what's supposed to be your own. That's a sign that you are under the attack of witchcraft. When you are finding it difficult to control your appetite, you want to fast and you are eating by 3 a.m. You say the fasting is 6 to 6. So if I eat by 4, it's not a problem. Are you a Muslim? They are the one that fast. They say they are fasting. And by 5 a.m., you see them pounding yam. When you eat fufu by 5 a.m., how can you be hungry till 7 in the evening? You cannot be hungry till 7 in the evening. Because they are under the influence of witchcraft. And the kingdom of darkness is controlling their lives and their ways. When you see certain things that are strange programmed into your body, those things are operating in your body system. It shows your body is under the influence of witchcraft. When you see certain things programmed into your room, or programmed into your office, you notice a particular part of your room making some strange sound. You don't know the kind of sound it is, but those strange sounds are there. It shows that there is an influence of witchcraft upon your life. When you are having nightmare all the time, and you find it difficult to sleep at night, it shows that you are under the influence of witchcraft. When your body is attacked with sicknesses every time, and you have become popular in the pharmacy and medicine store. Once you get there, they say, uh, Madam, uh, is it that uh, the same thing? Say, yeah, the same thing. He said, the same thing. He said, the same thing. And uh, you know, you have become well known there. It is shows that you are under the influence of witchcraft. But as you come here this morning, the power of God is coming down. Work of witchcraft shall be terminated. Oppression of witchcraft shall be terminated. Attack of witchcraft shall be terminated. How will they be terminated? 
through the light that will shine into your darkness. When that light shine, darkness will pack and go. When that light shine, every sickness will pack and go. When that light shine, works of Satan will pack and go. The light comes like fire. It enters into the places where the enemy has been operating. It consumes all the works of the devil. It terminates every program of Satan. It releases you from the prisons of the enemy. It discharges and acquits you from the demonic police that are holding you in ransom. It remove every satanic uniform from your body. It will slay the snake that is holding you. It will slay the serpent that is holding you. That light is Jesus Christ. Anywhere it comes to. Anywhere it enters. Miracles upon there. Anybody that he entered the body system, miracle happens there. When he enters a particular house, miracle happens there. And it's about to happen this morning. It's about to happen this morning. It's about to happen this morning. But well, look at the story of that woman. She was not genuinely born again. And they were going from one one prophet to another. Let me just tell you in a simple language. If you are not genuinely born again, are you go to any pastor or prophet? Once the message does not call you to be born again, it is not from the Lord. Everything you hear there is deceit. And that was what made that problem, the problem of that woman to be covered that she lost eight children, eight babies before she now had one that was alive. If I they call our mother-in-law, they were calling her woman of prayer. She was the woman they call woman of prayer, holy woman, that God was using her. But she was the witch that was holding the daughter, the daughter-in-law. But immediately she became born again. The light of God shines into her life. And that light started exposing every hidden work of Satan. It was exposing every hidden work of Satan. Had it been that she was not born again, she would never have been free. She will use all the olive oil and she will not be free. She will sprinkle all the holy water and she will not be free. Because the work of Satan is hidden in her life. If you are here this morning and you are not genuinely born again, you have not given your life to Jesus. And you are in this program. The Lord is calling you first to be genuinely born again. To surrender your life to Him. And accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then to begin to serve Him in truth and in spirit. When you become born again, 
New, new things will begin to happen in your life. When you become born again, the light of God will shine into your darkness. Darkness will pack and go. It will pack and go. It will pack and go. And that's why I want to pray for somebody here this morning. Somebody that wants to be genuinely born again. Who wants to repent of his sin? Born away from there. And then surrenders his life to Jesus. When you give your life to Jesus, the light of God will shine in your darkness. The spirit of God will begin to live in you. It will confirm to you that you have become a child of God. It will make you to realize that you have become a child of God. Then it will begin to expose every hidden work of darkness around you. That is when you are born again. I want to pray for somebody this morning. Somebody that wants to be genuinely born again. Who wants to repent of his sin? Who wants to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior? After the prayers, the light of God will enter everywhere. Every work of witchcraft here this morning shall be terminated. You will go back home with your freedom. You will go back home with your testimony. I believe you have picked one or two things already. Like I said, you don't need to pack everything together. Just pick about one, about two or three of them at most. And say, Lord, today I will be free. Today I shall be delivered. Today I will have victory. Today I will go home with testimony. And if you are ready now, you are ready now. If you know that you are ready now, I want you to take aside anything that may hinder you. Put your Bible one place. Put that bag one place. Put everything one side. And stand up on your feet with a determination in your heart that Lord I am ready Lord I am ready it is time for my freedom it is time for my deliverance and as you are standing up on your feet don't let anybody's voice silence your voice here. whatever that tell you that you should not shout for your freedom let it be silent Anything that will shut your mouth, tell that thing to keep quiet. I have suffered enough. It is time for my freedom. Call the name of Jesus very, very loud. Let that prayer sound like multitude of thunders. You will shout that name very, very loud. And say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Enter into my body with your deliverance. Stretch forth your hand of deliverance into the whole of my life. Do your work in my body. Do your work in my life. The of shall we pray. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning.
That hand is here. That hand is here. And of freedom is here this morning. And of deliverance is here this morning. And of deliverance is here this morning. And of freedom is here this morning. A miracle is going to happen here. No work of Satan will remain here this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want to pray for somebody here. Somebody that wants to be genuinely born again. You want to turn from sin. Repent totally of sin. You want to surrender your life totally to Christ. And begin to follow the Lord with all your heart. If you are the one, I want you to raise up your hand. You want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Of course, you have been going to church for many years. But this morning, you are taking a decision to serve the Lord. And I want to pray for somebody also who was a born again Christian but later dropped from the way. Many things happened and you drop from the way. But now you have decided to return back to the Lord. Raise up your hand also and join the brethren that are raising up right now. Can you please do something right now? Hold your Bible in one hand. You that is raising up your hand is the person I'm talking to right now. I'm Place the other hand on your chest. It is time to make a total surrender to the Lord. And you that is here this morning, who is born again, you are going to fervently pray for all the brethren that are placing their hand on their chest. That salvation will enter into their life this morning. You that place your hand on your chest. I want you to cry to the Lord Jesus. And say, Lord, I come to you this morning as a sinner. I have been living in sin all my life. Forgive me all my sin. And when you are praying that prayer, you'll be mentioning the sins that you have been committing to God one by one. I believe the Holy Ghost is going to remind you of all of them. And you will be mentioned and say, Father, I, I repent of the sin of lie telling. I repent of the sin of fornication. I repent of the sin of adultery. I repent of the sin of pride and boasting. Call the name of Jesus very, very loud. And everybody that is here who is born again, you will pray for all this brethren fervently. And say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me. Shall we pray? Everybody that is here should be praying. It is either they are praying for themselves or you are praying for them. Everybody must be praying right now. It is either they are praying for themselves or you are praying for them. This is a moment of salvation. 
a time of surrendering a time of yielding to Christ giving your life totally to Jesus this is the time I say, Father, I'm a sinner. I come to you this morning. Have mercy on me. Forgive me all my sins. All the sins I've been committing. The sin of light telling. The sin of adultery. The sin of fornication. The sin of pride. The sin of anger. The sin of malice. The sin of hatred. The sin of going to wrong places. Going to other gods. Where your presence is not. The sin of going to native doctors. Depending on powerless powers. I repent of them. Forgive 